The market trades relatively flat as the chop continues, and we give a big picture update. This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in last week's video, we talked about the fact that the Bears did have a setup to the downside as long as they could follow through. If they did not, then the Bulls still hold control and we would look for another high. And that's what happened. The Bulls were able to push back over the resistance areas. And now we got holiday chop over the weekend and into Monday. And it does look like the Bulls want one more high before we go lower. I'll get into that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use a wave theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, a fairly flat market yesterday. It chopped up, chopped down, and ended up around zero. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the SPX daily chart. This is going to be a little bit of a big picture overview of where we're at before we jump into the hourly. The SPX is what I'm using here instead of the futures, and the reason for that is because with the contract rolls and stuff, all of the labeling gets messed up and it's a lot of work to go back and fix all that labeling. So I keep my big picture on the SPX so it's much easier to see here. And uh, overall, we're still working on the same pattern we have been since the COVID lows here. And just as a quick kind of um, tutorial or idea of what an expanded B wave looks like, you got your initial push down here before COVID and our A wave, and then we got a pretty clear three wave move up. You got your A, B, and C to the upside. We were looking for this to be an expanded B wave. It was a very large expanded B wave to new highs, and then you got a very clear C wave down that we were looking for and gave us five waves to the low side for our larger degree wave four before starting this next pattern up. Back when everybody was looking for the market to crash and go down below 1,000 and blah, 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 we were looking for the market to rally back up to new all-time highs, and that's exactly what we saw. So... Overall, the uh, market off of the COVID lows is trying to complete a fifth wave. So your wave three back here, then you have your uh, expanded flat here, your ABC for four. And then off of that, we have our one, two, and then three. And then what happened in January of 22 is we got really close to our target. We were actually looking for around 5,000 plus, um, even as high as 5,500 on the SPX. We did not get that, and we turned down from there. And then they ended up breaking our major support channel here and coming down into what would be considered wave one of three territory. So here's wave one, then you have one of three, two of three, and then three of three, and so on. So this can no longer be wave four of three, which you would expect it to be. So it has to be either the start of a bigger move down or wave four of a diagonal. It turned out to be wave four of a diagonal where wave five is going to operate as an ending diagonal. And in that case, you have three wave moves all the way up. We've talked about how choppy this move is off of the lows in uh, October of 22. And um, you have three wave moves the entire wave up. There's no impulsive waves in here. They all overlap pretty heavily, uh, except for the C waves, obviously. And you have your one, two, and then your ABC for three, and then four, which comes down into wave one territory, which you would expect. And then we're trying to complete five here. Now, there's a couple different ways to look at how this ended. I've been talking about this being an expanded flat, much like we saw over here, where we came down and made a low, and then this would actually be an A, B setup like this, A, B over here, looking for this kind of move down. There's a few reasons for that. One, we missed some targets. Usually expanded flats go back and hit those targets. We've just about done that if we haven't already. And two, um, you have a corrective structure off of this low. So alternatively to the downside, what could we be looking at? Well, we could be looking at the last top was wave three, the April lows was wave four, and then that explains how this wave five is so ugly. I've talked about it a lot. It's overlapping. It is definitely a corrective structure, but you would expect a corrective structure if it's wave five of this larger ending diagonal. So you would expect it to be an ABC, and that's what we're seeing here to the upside that's targeting around the 5,400 area. Um, and that's on the ES, so 5,400, 5,380 on the SPX. And then, you know, obviously that's not a rigid number. It can go a little bit above that. Um, and actually, for an expanded flat, it can go as high as 5,562, I believe it is. We can look at that on the other chart. Um, but expanded flats can go to the 1,618 of wave A, and that would be up in the 5,500 area. So I don't think it's going to get that high. This one was one of those big expanded flats that just kept going, and then 
gave us the C wave down. But ultimately what we're trying to do is end wave five of this larger degree cycle three. And then we'd be looking for a much bigger correction to the downside. Now I've warned and talked about the correction many times saying even over here when we topped and looking to the downside, even here when we topped and looking to the downside, we must see five waves down if we're looking for a C wave. Now in this instance, there are two different ways this can play out. If it's an expanded flat and this is a B wave, then we would be looking for C down and we'd be looking for a five wave structure to get started, okay? However, if it is completing this ending diagonal, we would look for an ABC down like this, but the A leg should be pretty strong selling. It, it'll look similar to a C, so it's gonna be a little bit tough to decipher exactly where we're at. But in both those cases, we should be coming to 4,800 first, and then we can make a decision on exactly what we're looking at from there. In the 4,800 area, which is right about here, we can still push for one more high. So they can still make a pretty big pullback here into 4,800 and then back above. But the recipe here is ready for a larger correction. Now, we still have to follow through and that still has to happen. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's no guarantees in the market. There's no certainties in the market. But a lot of what we talk about here happens because of Elliott Wave. We talked about the October lows of 22 and going to 4,300 plus, which we did. We talked about the COVID lows and going back over 4,000, which we did, all because of how Elliott Wave works and how we get these targets and get these um, overall structures. And so when we're looking at this, the recipe is there, the, the targets are there, the pattern is there, the, the pattern to the upside is very full of a very major scale which gives us the potential for a much bigger correction. Now, I'm not here peddling doom and gloom. That's not what I do. Many of you know that back here, I was a perma bull. Everybody told me I was too bullish. Down here, I was a bull. Everybody told me I was too bullish. Here, I'm a bear. We are up at the top. We are at the nosebleed highs of a very full pattern of a very large, large degree pattern. And the recipe is there for a major pullback. That just means I'm protecting my assets. Okay? So... Um, we've made lots of gains from way back here, so we're protecting those gains, and we're waiting to see exactly what we get. 4,800 is the next major key level to the downside. It is this support right here, and then we would look for a either impulsive move or move back up in wave five, depending on what kind of structures we get, or a break of that level, and if 4,800 breaks, then it becomes... Uh, a lot more likely we're headed down in a much bigger correction, okay? So overall, there's no need to be crazy just yet to the short side. I do believe that we will see a major shift into a bear market in the near future, but until we get the evidence of that, that is Elliott Wave theory, not Elliott Wave fact, just so you're aware. So all I do is prepare myself for these types of things by protecting my assets. Back here at bottoms, I get risk on. Near tops, risk off. So that's the big picture on the SPX. Let's jump into a little bit more granular on the hourly chart. All right, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And I'll make this quick since I kind of went over what we were looking at there. The April lows back here, um, we're looking at this either being a wave four or a wave a so if it's wave four then we're looking at this as an abc to continue and complete that ending diagonal off of the october 22 lows we talked about in the bigger picture and we still look like we may need another high for that so that would be the first thing in that 40 5400 region then we'd look for turnover the other option is that it is an a wave down and we're looking at this expanded b wave up and if that's the case We'd still be looking for that fifth wave up towards 5,400 because this is wave C of that wave B. And then from there, we'd want to see a five wave move down like this that tells us that we are much more likely starting a C wave down and we already topped over here and this is just an expanded B wave like we saw on the bigger picture chart. So um, the structure to the downside will matter. They need to break through this 50 to 70 area first then they're going to need to break through 5,100 to really give us confidence that 
the move up is over and we're trying to start a bigger move to the downside into that 4800 area and from there we will need to see what the structure looks like and where we're at before we decide overall though we are looking at a more bearish outlook over on the nasdaq all right guys so here we are on the daily nasdaq chart and we are looking at a very similar count where we had a major wave three up major wave four down back in the october lows of 22 and now we're completing that major wave five to the upside and that major wave five targets where we're at now to about the 19150 19160 area but about 19100 in that area we'd be looking for another high here to complete and then we'd be looking for the overall pattern to come back and start testing support and then what we get from there will be a determining factor in how um how we look at the future of the nasdaq and to the downside so again same type of concept we're looking at completing this five wave structure up this can be the top here as an expanded flat a and b if that's the case we'd want to see five waves down if we see five waves down that tells us this was an expanded flat and we're looking at the c wave down and we're going to see what we get from there however if we get a more corrective structure that breaks support so they go up and make a high and they give us an abc and break support then we're looking to come into the 16500 area or so uh, that 16500 area is good support is this consolidation and the prior high over here so this area would be the next support level to watch and if they break through that then we'd be more confident we're heading down in a much larger structure uh, and a much bigger pullback overall on the nasdaq so nothing has really changed other than they have drawn out this move up taking it a little higher than we expected. But overall, the concept is the same. We're trying to finish a major bull market that started right after the Great Depression and is ending in this era right now. And we'll see exactly what and when and if that happens based on the structure of the market. Like I said, all we're doing is protecting assets up here. There's no great count, in my opinion, for a runaway train to the upside. Of course, the bulls can take it higher. Of course, the market can do whatever it wants. But we protect our assets at near tops. That's what you do. And then we wait for pullbacks, get back in, and go again. All right, so that's where we're at on the NASDAQ. Looking for it to roll over. 16,500 is major support. If we break through that, then we'll be more confident that a major top is in and we're moving down. Ultimately, though, they still need to move uh, down below yesterday's low to get started and below last week's low overall. Drilling in on the NASDAQ. All right, drilled in on the NASDAQ, we are still looking at a very ugly structure to the upside, but we do have a wave four in place and then potentially a uh, impulsive move up here if they can hold above the wave one high and finish this move into the 19100 area. That's what we would expect. That would be our target for this move up. Um, overall, if they break down below this week or last week's low and yesterday's low, we'd be looking for them to break... Um, this blue box down here at around 18407 um, to 18395 about the 18400 area this consolidation zone here breaking below that would be a good indication we're headed back towards that 165 area where we'd be coming down to retrace this move up spike a low into 16500 and then see what we get from there um, otherwise the pressure does remain up on the nasdaq towards the 19100 to 200 area and that would be our next targets higher. Uh, 1236 extension of A is the 19100 area, as well as another target for A being the um, 2.0 extension of waves one and two. So this area here, we've seen a lot of momentum slowing down on several indicators. The chart is ugly. You're starting to see overlap. You're starting to see weakness in the move up. All of this is an indication of a topping pattern. These things take time. It took months for 22's top to play out. And once it did, we turned over for a couple of years. So still waiting for the top to materialize. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a one-day thing. These things take time. We look at structure. And again, as long as we're over 18,400, the bulls are in control of this market. And you should have a bullish outlook in the short term. But the recipe is there for us to be topping and turning over. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. 
take you right over to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible monthly plans that both come with a seven-day free trial. This is because I want you to get in there, make sure you love it, become part of our team, interact with PT and I, and make sure it's for you before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. You literally have nothing to lose by checking us out. We also have our education material that is helping traders immensely understand this market. We have our Elliott Wave for beginners and our advanced Elliott Wave. In our advanced Elliott Wave course, we go over the complex structures that this market can bring, such as your advanced FIB levels, your diagonals, your double top, double and triple threes, your flats, your triangles, etc. Each video is bite-sized, about 10 minutes in length, where we go through what the structure looks like. We go through and draw the structure so you can see the wave counts and understand what they are. Then we add in the FIB levels so you can see how they react off of the FIB levels and what we're supposed to be looking at. And then finally, we go to the chart and we see what it looks like on the chart so that you can see this in real time and understand how to measure them, how to find their targets and see what happened. In this one, you can see after wave five, we sold off back to the start. And this was wave five of a wave three. So they came back, held support, and then took off again for overall wave five. Now, as you can see on the screen, people are loving this and it is helping them understand these complex patterns. However, if you are new to Elliott Wave and you're just getting started, we also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. This course, it's helping real traders make real money and finally understand the market in a way that makes sense. It can be very difficult when good news makes the market go up and bad news makes the market go down. And that's because the news cycles don't matter. Elliott knew this long ago and he knew that key levels are what mattered and he knew what happened when those held and what happened when they failed. This gives you a huge trading advantage over the rest of the market. Now, this course is 25 videos where I go over three different parts. The introduction, where we go over your mindset, the KISS method, why it works, all that kind of stuff. The chart setup and tools where we go through every tool you need to use along with Elliott Wave Theory, why to use it and how to use it, as well as the Elliott Wave for Beginners online course area where we go through each of the waves how to measure them, how to understand them, how to find the targets, the key levels, the corrective depth theory, the theory of alternation, the pivot, everything you need to know to understand this complex market in a way that makes sense. The really cool thing about both courses is if you want to get them at a discount, you can get both courses in our bundle for $177, which essentially makes this a $30 course. Or if you don't want to pay anything at all, you can simply join one of our monthly rooms and you get them for free. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where we go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, and the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing in day trade, so we do trade quite often in my room. If you're looking for futures trading, individual stocks, income trading, and advanced training, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob Room, as well as individual stocks, futures trading, PT's income trading that's just killing the market and his advanced training reduced risk binary method that is absolutely crushing it. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money and it's how he structures those trades that's so unique. Something you really have to see to understand and that's another reason we give you that seven day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, the key takeaways for it today, as long as we're above this low from last week, the 52.73 low, as long as we're above that, the bulls can push for one more high. They are in control. Below that, the bears can start to take back control and start to push down. But the whole point is we are bullish until we break support. Over on the NASDAQ, same situation. As long as we're above this 18.400 area, the bulls are in control and can push for another high towards 19.100. However, if the bears do show up and take us to the downside, we'll need to see what kind of structure it is, and we should be looking for a bigger correction overall. Guys, that is your market update for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.